This Iraqi church is one of the few places in the world where you can still hear Aramaic, the language believed to be spoken by Jesus Christ. For more than 2,000 years, Christians have lived and prayed here. But now, three years after ISIS declared a caliphate and overran much of Iraq, these people are struggling to profess their faith in the very region that gave birth to Christianity. To see what remains, we traveled to Iraq's Nineveh province, a vast region home to Christians for centuries. So people used to live here? Yeah. There were two families. We're walking through a home in Batnaya, a town once occupied by ISIS. Even though the houses here are abandoned, it's impossible to feel safe knowing what must have gone on in these rooms. We're careful to avoid stepping on anything that could be an explosive device buried beneath the trash. This is one of many We've asked Father Salar, the priest charged with overseeing the area's reconstruction, to show us ISIS's network of underground tunnels. The militants use the tunnels to go from one home to the next, undetected by surveillance drones and airstrikes. And what, is, what does this say here? Here, uh, it's an invitation to, to pray, and uh, because with the prayer, they, are, uh, they have the more power to, uh, uh, to combat against uh, American enemies. Before ISIS spent more than two years occupying this town, some 6,000 people used to live here. A sign now reads, no place for the cross in the land of Islam. Batnaya is totally deserted right now. It's really, really quiet. Um, and what's really haunting is the fact that we see IEDs just lying out here unexploded. This centuries-old church is covered in graffiti, and the altar is no longer standing. Most other buildings were hit by airstrikes and mortar rounds, causing an estimated $30 million in damage. For house for me is no good. This is where you lived? Yes. You. Okay. Yeah. You can uh, come with me. The houses still standing in Batnaya look a lot like this. Oh, wow. What ISIS didn't loot, they trashed. Canned food and painkillers litter the floor. Oh, sleeping here. Mm. Oh, this was your room? Okay. Yeah, yeah. For the first time in three years, this family has come back to survey the damage. Do you think that you'll move back here one day? My name is here, Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Okay. My only people here are Christian. Yeah. This is a تراث مالنا القريه مالتنا يعني ولدنا هنا ونرجع نرجع عليها American and Iraqi troops liberated the area in October of 2016, but this community still lives in fear. That's because even before ISIS, they were targets. Once a significant minority in Iraq, the number of Christians has shrunk from more than one million a little over a decade ago to fewer than 300,000 today. To make things more complicated, these people live in disputed territory. To the north, the Kurds operate a semi-autonomous government. To the south sits the Iraqi Arab central government. It's not clear who will have control of these towns in a post-ISIS world. And in the meantime, people here say neither government has come to their aid. Need uh, to work very hard uh, to reconstruct uh, it. Uh, after ISIS, uh, we saw uh, the big damage of the village, uh, it's about 80% damaged. Are you getting any help from the outside? Till now, no. We have many organizations that they visited us and many states that they promised us, but till now, we don't have nothing. The feeling of desperation isn't confined to Batnaya. Ten minutes down the road in Teleskuf, there is no electricity or running water. But for many families, being able to return home beats the alternative. Several hundred families have moved back, but many are afraid to return. 
Kurdish troops guarding the city told us they haven't been given enough resources to defend themselves. <laughs> When ISIS came, this family fled to Dehuk. When they returned, they found their farm in ruins and with it, their livelihood. Do you feel safe here? How long do you think before life feels normal again for your kids? For now, until their ransacked church can be fully restored, Telescope residents gather in this makeshift space every week to pray. When you pray for Telescope, um, what do you ask God for? I ask that uh, all the families uh, come back and uh, to have uh, the security and to not uh, uh, repeat this event and uh, to give guarantee to this family that the life can start, uh, can begin uh, in Telescope because we have to maintain this land, a Christian land, and we have to restart the life.